I believe right after learning how to do taxes, what we should have learned in high school was medical terminology and lingo. And of course, these lessons are key for anyone in the medical world, students and professionals alike. But all of this is also great for the general public. We all come across some sort of interaction with the medical world in our life, and that is why we should all know the terminology and lingo. First off, amazing stuff. You just finished watching the root words lesson 1 and 2, did the practice rounds, and now you're ready for the finale, the ending, or what we'll call the suffix. I know you learned a lot of tricks and tips in the previous lessons, and this lesson won't be any different. If you missed these videos, tap on the links in the caption below, we listed them all out. Before we begin, we'll do a quick little recap. Medical terms have a beginning, middle, and an end. The prefix is the descriptive part, which we showed you in red. The root words is the subject of the word, which was shown in yellow, and the suffix is the condition of the word. This is what gives the term meaning, and we'll show it to you in green. And here as you see it, we'll cover them in categories like suffixes in signs and symptoms, procedures, tests, suffixes that relay something descriptive, and lastly, we'll just do a general list. This is going to be fun, and don't forget to please support us by simply subscribing, because we can't do these videos without you. If you hit the subscribe button, we'll make sure to do a lot more of these helpful lessons. Let's begin our lesson with our well-known suffixes, found in signs and symptoms. First off is itis, which we spoke about in the prefix and root words lesson. This means inflammation, and we have gastritis, inflammation of the stomach lining. But let's also bring back our previous example in osteoarthritis. This is the degenerative joint disease. We see arthro in there, which means joint, and this disease in which tissues in the joint break down over time, causing inflammation. Osteo is also in the word, and it's the root word for bone. Paresis means weakness, and we can look at the example in hemiparesis, where we notice a prefix we discussed, hemi, which means half or one side. And this one-sided muscle weakness, say perhaps of the face we know from the condition of Bell's palsy, this is a great mnemonic to know the signs and symptoms of Bell's palsy. Plegia is paralysis. An example of this is quadriplegia, which is using another prefix that we learned which means four. And this is when we have paralysis of all four limbs. Rhea is discharge or flow, and we see this in our basilar skull fracture lesson with rhinorrhea of CSF or otorrhea of CSF. And rhino we know means nose, and oto means ear. In this condition, there's also blood otorrhea. So just remember, rhea is for discharge or flow. Edema is swelling or an accumulation of fluid. And we can see it in lymphedema, where there is swelling caused by a buildup of lymph fluid in the body between the skin and the muscle. Odynia is for any type of pain or discomfort. For example, in hepatodynia, there is pain on palpation of the liver. Spasm is a sudden muscle contraction. An example is a bronchospasm, which is the root word bronco for bronchi in the lungs. Bronchospasm is a contraction of the muscular coat of the bronchial tubes. Also, you can think of a muscle spasm, a cramp, what we call a Charlie horse. This is actually funny. Back in the day, baseball players would see this old horse named Charlie pull a roller across the field. This muscles of this poor old horse would be so stiff, he could hardly walk. Whenever players would begin cramping up and get spasms, they would call it a charley horse. The more you know, right? Ridge or regia is like what we discussed before in rhea because it's excessive flow or discharge. Most common example for this would be a hemorrhage. And while we call it a hemorrhage, it still has hemo in it, which is our root word for blood. Hemorrhage means a heavy discharge of blood from a blood vessel. Algia is pain. And you can recall the examples of mastalgia, which is breast pain, mast, right? And neuralgia, which is nerve pain because it's got neuro in it. And also remember, we discussed Morgan Freeman in our previous lessons. During the FIFA World Cup, he displayed his battle with fibromyalgia. Same way we can break it down to fibro, my, and algia. Tension means pressure. It's not used so much, but we know it in hypertension and hypotension, signifying low or high blood pressure. If you watched the prefix lesson, you'll recall this table. Thermia is for heat. We have hyper and hypothermia for abnormally high or low body temperature. Great stuff. Now we'll discuss suffixes that relate to procedures, followed by test. Notice that these are all surgical terms as well. 
First two we have are ostomy and otomy. Ostomy is to surgically create an artificial opening or stroma. For instance, we have the surgery of colostomy. Now I know you already see a previous root word, colo, which refers to the colon. So colostomy is to create a new opening for the colon to pass through the abdominal wall. Now don't confuse ostomy with otomy. Otomy means to make an incision or cut into something. Here, let's use another previous root word, bronch, which means bronchi or lungs. Our example is bronchotomy. This is a procedure for an open airway between a patient's lung and the outside world. Nice, moving on to ectomy, which is a surgical removal or excision of something. For this, we know about an appendectomy, which is a removal of the appendix. Raffi refers to a procedure or technique of suturing or repairing a structure, such as tissues or organs. An example would be myarophy, which is a surgical suturing of a muscle wound. Oscopy is the examination or viewing of something with a scope. Some examples are laparoscopy for viewing the abdomen, gastroscopy for examining the stomach, and arthroscopy for examining the joints with a scope. We learned lapro, gastro, and arthro in our previous root words lesson. So remember, lapro is for abdomen, gastro is for stomach, and arthro is for joint. Please review this. The suffix centesis is to puncture or the aspiration of. For example, we have abdominal centesis or cardio centesis. So the surgical puncture of the abdominal for abdomen or the cardio for heart. Suffix plasty, think plastic surgery, is to repair, restore, replace, and we have our examples like blepharoplasty and rhinoplasty. If you watched the previous lesson, you'll quickly identify blepharo is the root word for eyelids. So blepharoplasty is actually the procedure to reduce the bagginess from your lower eyelids and remove excess skin from your upper eyelid. And rhino, do you remember as the horn of the rhino? The nose, which is for rhinoplasty, which is simply a nose job. Otripsy is for crush. We have lithotripsy, which we'll recall litho for stone or calculus. So lithotripsy is a procedure to crush a stone such as a kidney stone. Desis means to bind or fuse together. Pericardiodesis is a great example of previous medical terms for practice. Peri is a prefix for around, cardio is a root word for heart, and desis, as we said, means to bind or fuse together. So pericardiodesis is a procedure involving the fusion of the layers of the pericardium, which is the membrane enclosing the heart. For scope, you think similar to the suffix oscopy, as we discussed, but this is now the instrument to actually examine and view. For this, we'll give the example of our favorite, the stethoscope, which we said in a previous lesson that stetho is for chest. And we all know that stethoscope is used for listening to the action of the heart or breathing. And otoscope is another instrument. We already learned oto means ear. So otoscope is a tool which shines a beam of light to help visualize and examine the condition of the ear canal and eardrum. Opsy, which is examination or inspection of. Think biopsy or autopsy. Biopsy is when a pathologist removes a tissue to examine and study it. An autopsy is the examination of a body after death to determine the cause and extent of the disease. Okay, our last suffix for procedures and these surgical terms is pexy, and this is for surgical fixation, when a surgeon is fastening something in a fixed position and back into the right place. Think splenopexy, which is the cool process of creating an extra peritoneal pocket or wrapping the spleen in absorbable mesh and anchoring it to the retroperitoneum. You're definitely learning some crazy things on this episode. Okay, nice. Well done. Now we can quickly cover three suffixes for test. We'll make all of these related in some way, so pay attention to the way we explain it. Gram is for a record, image, or picture. For instance, electrocardiogram, or ECG, also known as EKG, is a simple and fast test to evaluate the heart's electrical activity through repeated cardiac cycles. These pulses are recorded by electrodes that stick to your chest that send signals to a machine. This machine is our next suffix, graph, which is an instrument used to record or take a picture. So in this case, we use an electrocardiograph to record the activity of the heart where we are producing the electrocardiogram, which are recorded wavy lines with a series of spikes. The doctor is able to analyze the pattern and identify any problems. Graphy is a process of recording or imaging, and we know this because electrocardiography is the actual process of recording the electrical activity of the heart. Therefore, gram is the image, 
Graph is the machine or instrument used to take the image, and graphy is just the overall process. Now suffixes can also denote something descriptive. Have a look. Megaly, which will remind you of a prefix we discussed in the previous lesson, megalo, which means large. Mega, right? But megaly is for irregular enlargement. For example, in cardiomegaly, which has the root word for cardio, which is the heart, is when there's an abnormal enlargement of the heart. Ico is for small, microscopic, or something little. Just think of follicle, which is a small anatomical cavity or deep narrow depression. Here, follicle, follicles in the ovary, think small. For constriction, think narrowing or contract. Vasoconstriction is a typical word for root word vaso, meaning related to blood vessel, and vasoconstriction is the narrowing of the blood vessel. Dilation is to expand, widen, or stretch. Think in the same light. If vasoconstriction means to narrow, then vasodilation means to expand or widen the blood vessel. Eurism is also used for expanding or widening. Think aneurysm. An aneurysm is a result of a weakened artery wall. So an abnormal bulge or ballooning in the wall of a blood vessel that expands and widens is an aneurysm. Genesis is to develop, produce, or form. Oogenesis, in which our body's largest cell, the oocyte, is under the process of formation. Stasis is stoppage or slowing down, like in the flow of blood or bodily fluid. Let's think hemostasis, which is a stoppage or cessation of bleeding from a blood vessel. And in comparison, like we said, in hemorrhage, a hemorrhage, which is the excessive flow of blood from a blood vessel. Cool, that does it now for our descriptive suffixes, but there are more and we'll discuss them soon. Let's move on and finish this lesson with our list of general suffixes that we should know. Seal is for hernia or swelling. You'll find this in cystocele or rectocele. In herniocele, we have a protrusion through a body opening. Recall the root words of cyst and recto, right? Genic means caused or produced by. Now this opens a variety of suffixes. You'll find that mean the same thing. You'll see ac, ik, al, os, tic, ari, and these all mean pertaining to or related to in medical terminology. So when we say cigarettes have carcinogens or are carcinogenic, means they have the potential to cause cancer. We said in our root words lesson, carcino means cancer or tumor, right? So remember this and don't smoke cigarettes. Moving on to ism, which is for medical condition, disease, or process. For this, we'll also open up more suffixes that mean the same thing. They're ia, cis, e, osis, pathy, ago, and ima. You'll recall at RevMed, we spoke about the five A's of Alzheimer's, and they're all EAS, and you can use this as a refresher to brush up on some more medical terms. You can also recall Hagrid and his gigantism, which is a growth hormone hypersecretion during childhood. And for ism, we can always see goiter in patients with hyperthyroidism, which is our prefix hyper, a root word thyroid, and now our suffix ism for medical condition, disease, or process. Iasis also means condition, which is abnormal. The word psoriasis actually comes from the sora, meaning itch, and iasis for condition. Psoriasis, as you know, is a chronic disease in which our immune system becomes overactive and causes skin cells to multiply too quickly. Allergist and allergy are simple. Allergist is a specialist in that particular area of study, and allergy is a study of. So a cardiologist is a specialist that knows about the cardio, the heart, and his field of study is cardiology, the study of the heart. Oma we know means tumor or growth. Pathies for suffering or disease. For example, we discussed in our root words lesson about the term cardiomyopathy. We broke down cardio meaning heart, myo for muscle, and now suffix pathy for disease. Osis is for condition, such as scoliosis, which is a condition of the vertebral column in which it has an abnormal lateral curvature. Next is penia, which means deficiency. Leukopenia. If you recall from our prefix lesson, leuco means white, and leukopenia is a condition where the body doesn't have enough disease-fighting leukocytes in the blood, the white blood cells. Nice how it all works, right? Now we have pnea. This is for breathing or respiration, and for this I want us to look at breathing patterns for extra review. 
Here we have eupnea, which we discussed in the prefix lesson and said eu is for normal. This is a normal breathing pattern. Then we have no breathing, which is apnea. You know this for the A for absent. The prefix brady in the next one, which we said means slow, and this is slow and shallow breathing. Tachypnea we said tachy means rapid or fast. So this is rapid and shallow breathing. And then we'll even add hyperpnea, which has hyper to mean above normal. And this type of breathing is hyperventilation, rapid and deep breathing. Great, now you're a pnea expert. Next is emia, and this is for blood condition. We know the easiest blood condition, anemia, which has an, which is the prefix for without or lacking. And this is when we have a problem of lacking enough healthy red blood cells or hemoglobin to carry oxygen. Urea is the suffix for in urine. So examples like hematuria, which you probably figured out means blood in the urine, since it's heme and urea together. Lastly, we have trophy, which means nourishment. Examples of trophy are atrophy, which has a for our prefix absent. And in medical terms, this means when there's a waste of something. So you can kind of say it's malnourishment. It's like hypertrophy when cells increase in size and dystrophy, which is dis, meaning abnormal. And that's it for now. Good work in watching this lesson. More to come soon. Next up for you is some suffix practice rounds, which will put your understanding to the test. Also, stay tuned for a lesson on medical abbreviations. It's coming soon. Here's a question to send you off. Tell me which medical term we are trying to say over here. We're looking for two root words here that are connected, and the suffix is iasis. This word you're looking for is to do with the kidney. Here you're looking for a word for stone, and iasis you just learned. Our hint here is calculi typically formed in the kidneys and ideally leave the body via the urethra without any pain. Larger ones are painful and may need surgery. Okay, let's hear your answer to the medical term we're looking for. Write it in the comments below. If you'd like to see more of this lesson, head over to our Instagram page and TikTok channel at rev.med. We'll have this lesson along with many other topics for you to study. By the way, don't forget to do questions. Are you learning something from our videos? Well then click the subscribe button to your right. We are releasing high yield lessons and ways for you to get ahead in class. Be sure to follow us on Instagram to take interactive quizzes and view your favorite diagrams. Nothing can stop you, but only if you believe in yourself. You got this.